In this video, I want to start off by thanking everyone for helping me reach 100,000 subscribers. As always, I try my best to bring you videos on the newest devices as early as I possibly can. Since I pretty much purchase or pay for everything for which I create a video on, I can't always make videos on every device. I appreciate everyone's support, and as long as you subscribe and keep watching my videos, I'll do my best to create as many videos as possible. Again, a big thanks to everyone, and with that being said, let's get back to the video. This is the Samsung Galaxy S23 Plus disassembly. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and follow me on Twitter, so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. As always, to start off, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Here's a better look at that. Now heat needs to be applied to the back plate to loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then a plastic pry tool can be used to pry the back plate off. Here's a better look at the glass back plate. The glass camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and prying them off. So you won't need to remove the back plate in order to replace those. There are 20 Phillips screws that need to be removed. The flex cable for the wireless charging coil and the NFC antenna need to be disconnected from the main board. The NFC antenna is located here, and the wireless charging coil is here. There's also a layer of graphite film to help transfer heat. The battery cable can now be disconnected, followed by the rest of the flex cables. Here's a better look at the top earpiece speaker. The top earpiece speaker has the little white foam balls, which make the speaker sound larger than it actually is. Here's a look at the speaker itself, and there's an antenna board on the side of the speaker. The main board is a dual layered sandwich design. Connected to the main board, there's a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera, a 50 megapixel wide, and a 10 megapixel telephoto lens. The main camera and telephoto lens are the only ones with OIS or optical image stabilization. There's a secondary microphone on top, and the LED flash is located below it. The proximity sensor is located on the other side, and the camera connectors can be disconnected by just popping them off. There's also a graphite pad over the back shields to help transfer heat. Once the graphite pad has been peeled back, we can see thermal paste on top of the RAM which is seated on top of the processor. Here's a better look with the thermal paste removed. The 12 megapixel front facing camera is glued in place with a cure in place gasket. So if you needed to replace that, you'd have to use an X-Acto knife or a razor blade to carefully cut around the sides and pull out the camera. Here's a look at the speaker assembly. This bottom speaker also has the little white foam balls which make the speaker sound larger than it actually is. And the linear haptic feedback motor or vibrator motor is located in the speaker assembly behind the speaker. To replace the screen, you'd have to remove the back plate, the screws on the bottom speaker assembly and the speaker assembly itself, giving you access to the screen cable, at which point you could disconnect it, and then heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry the old screen off, apply new adhesive, Reapply the new screen, reconnect the flex cable, and reassemble the phone. You can also replace the screen from the front and you don't need to take the phone apart. However, that's a little bit more difficult in my opinion. If you're going that route, you'd have to heat up the front of the phone to loosen up the adhesive underneath and gently pry the screen off, making sure you disconnect the flex cable from the screen without tearing it, at which point you would apply new adhesive and realign and reapply the new screen, but you have to make sure you align it perfectly because when you're pressing it down, you want to make sure the flex cable connects to the screen properly. If not, you have to pry the screen off again, risking damaging it, and you have to reapply new adhesive again. This flex cable connects the screen to the main board, and these two connect the subboard to the main board.
There are three Phillips screws which are holding down the subboard. Here's a better look at the subboard. The microphone is located here, and the SIM reader is located on the other side, as well as the charger port. There's also a red rubber gasket around the charger port. To replace the battery, there's an adhesive pull pouch provided to help you pry the battery off. Here's a better look at the 4700 milliamp hour battery. Once the battery is removed, we can see the copper vapor chamber which runs underneath the battery as well as the motherboard. The flex cable for the volume keys and power button is located on this side. If you need to replace that, you have to gently peel off the flex cable and lift up and pull out the metal bracket from the frame. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 9 out of 10. Now it's time to reassemble the device. Once everything's back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the backplate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.